Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture of ROP206 microcontrollers with lab, which is dedicated to the combinational logic design. In the first part of this lecture, we will deal with the implementation technology and logic design. Here we have an overview of the two parts for the lecture. As I mentioned in the first part, we will deal with the design procedure which includes several steps like specification, formulation, optimization, technology mapping and verification at the end. And then we see how we can deal with the hierarchical design approach to make the designing procedure overly more efficient. Then we will talk most, more on the technology mapping, how we can map from the AND or AND NOT implementation into the NAND or NOR implementation. So we just use the NAND or just the NOR gates. And then we'll deal with the verification whether we can do it manually or using some simulation. In the next part, in the part two of the lecture on the combinational logic circuit design, we will deal with the functions and function blocks, functional blocks. Then we will see about the rudimentary logic functions, decoders and encoders will be considered and afterwards we will deal with the multiplexers. But these will be the topics for the second part of the lecture on combinational logic design. Okay, so here we have the definition of the combinational circuits. Just to remind you what a combinational circuit is. The combinational circuit has a set of M Boolean inputs, a set of N Boolean outputs, and there are N switching functions. So we have N outputs and as a result there are N switching functions. And each of those switching functions will map to the power of M number of input combinations to an output such that the current output depends only on the current input values. So the circuit does not have any kind of memory. The current output depends only on the current input values. Over here we have the block diagram for the combinational logic circuit. We have m number of inputs, m boolean inputs, and we have n number of outputs. There are n boolean outputs. And for each output we have a a switching function in it, yeah? so there are a number of switching functions. So now we are going to see how we can design a combinational logic circuit. There is a procedure that we need to follow. There are some steps for this. The first step is the specification. In the specification step, we need to write a specification for the circuit, which we are going to design if one is not already available. So sometimes the specification is available already. If someone wants you to design a circuit, that person might give you the specification already. Once we have the specification, the next step will be the formulation. In the formulation, we need to derive a true stable or initial Boolean equations which define the, relate, the required relationships between the inputs and outputs referring to the specification. But sometimes this itself, the formulation, is already uh, shown in the specification. But if it's not the case, we need to do the formulation. And then we will apply the hierarchical design if appropriate. We will talk about the hierarchical design later in this lecture. Once we are done with the formulation, the next step would be the optimization. In the optimization step, we will apply the two-level and multiple-level optimization, the ones that you have learned in the previous lectures using the Carnot map, for example, and then we will draw a logic diagram or provide a net list for the resulting circuit using ANDs, ORs, and inverters. And over here in this lecture, we will focus on drawing the logic diagram. But an alternative to drawing a di logic diagram would be to write down a net list for the resulting circuit. Once we are done with the optimization, the next step would be the 
will be the technology mapping. In the technology mapping, we will map the resulting circuit that we have from the previous step, the logic diagram that we have, we will map it into the new logic diagram using the required in the technology. If we are uh, required to implement the circuit using the NAND gates only, for example, we need to do the technology mapping. And finally, once we are done with the technology mapping, we need to do the verification. We need to verify to see if what we have designed and are going to implement is performing what it is supposed to do. Okay, so we will refer to the specification and and check indeed verify that what we have here at the end is performing what is specified at the beginning. All right, so we will go through all these steps using some examples. Here we have the example. The specification is provided for us. We need to create or design a BCD to XS3 code converter. So you already know what the BCD code is, binary coded decimal for the for the numbers, for the multiple digit in the numbers. And we want to, we need to create a combinational logic circuit with converts this PCD code into another code which is called as XS3. Indeed, this circuit is aimed to transform the BCD code for the decimal digits to the XS3 code for the same decimal digits. For the BCD, we already know that the code words for the digits starting from 0 to 9 are in the form of 4 bits. So we have 4 bits for each BCD code. And we have it for the decimal digits starting from 0, 1, 2, up to 9. And they, is the, the four codes that we have for these values start from 0, 0, 0, 0, and they increase and go up to 1, 0, 0, 1. This is what we have for BCD. On the other hand, for the XS3, the code words that we have for the digits through digits starting from 0 through 9, they are also in the form of 4 bits. So this is for XS3. For the digits starting from 0 going up to 9 in the decimal, the codes that we have in this case will be the equivalent binary number plus 3. So we'll add 3 to whatever we have in the binary for this code. So for example, for 0, originally we have 0, 0, 0. We will add 3, 0, 0, 1, 1. And as a result, we'll get 0, 0, 1, 1. So for 0, we'll have 0, 0, 1, 1. For 1, we will have 1 and we need to add 0, 0, 1, 1 to it. Therefore, we'll have 0 here. 0 here, 1 and 0. So we will have for 1, we will have 0, 1, 0, 0. And so on and so forth. For 9 and then we have 1, 0, 0, 1 plus 0, 0, 1, 1, which will give us 0, 0, 1, 1. So for 9, we'll have 1, 1, 0, 0. In the next slide, we have the indeed a table which shows what we have for what which XS3 code we have for each digit. So for all the 0 to 9 digits. So we have the indeed we, now we, we know what we are looking for in terms of the the functionality of the circuit. We need to convert these codes. So for example 0 0 0 0 will be the input and as a result the output will be 0 0 1 1. If the input is equal to 1001, zero, zero, one, the output needs to be 1100. And then in the implementation, we will implement it with the multiple level, level circuit and with the NAND gates plus the inverters. So these are the specifications which are provided for us. Now, in order to go through the formulation step, We have 
constructed the truth table indeed or a table which maps the input to the output so on the left side of the table here we have the input in the form of bcd code and we have four bits a b c and d and on the right hand side we have the output which gives us the xs3 code and we are calling each bit at the output side as w x and y and z our table will have 10 rows because we are doing it for the decimal digits starting from 0 to 9 so from 0 1 to up to 9 therefore we have 10 rows The BCD variables are in the form of A, B, C, and D. And for the XS3 or output variables, we have the W, X, Y, and Z. We have 10 rows. But since we have four input variables, we could have 16 indeed rows here. 2 to the power of 4 or 16. So 10 are here. As a result, 6 more rows could be here but since they don't appear in the bcd code we can deal them as the don't care cases when we want to find the optimization uh, step indeed when we go through the optimization step we will consider the consider them as the don't care cases over here if you have a second look at the table uh, you can see that for each digit for each decimal digit, the XS3 code is obtained by adding 0011 into the BCD code. Okay, you can verify it for it, for all of them in detail. We have gone through few of them. Now we need to go through the opt optimization step. In the optimization step, we consider each output variable separately. So W x y and z w x y and z we can look at one column of the output side in this table at a time so you can consider the w for example you look at the first column here if you consider it with the left hand side with the input side we will have a form of truth table where we have x's here for the lower part and here we go so we have the the k map or Carnot map for all the output variables for w for example we have it here for x y and z for each one, we fill the Carnot map referring to the truth table with ones and x's. And then looking at the Carnot map, now we should be able to obtain the expression for each output variable. And that's what we have here. So W is obtained as A or B and C or B and D. X is equal to not B and C or not B and D or B and not C and not D. And y is equal to c and d or not c and not d and z is equal to not d so the expression for all the output variables are obtained now we have them we have obtained them indeed using the Carnot map and they have the expressions so this is the first level of optimization in, indeed using the Carnot map now we can continue to improve the the cost that we have for the expressions so let's see what we have here so this is the result that we have got using by applying the techniques that we, we know for the Carnot maps if we calculate the gate cost g cost here we have it equal to 23 but for each one of the output variables we have considered them separately yeah? we haven't considered any relation between them but now if we introduce this term here in the form of a factor t1 which is equal to c or d and then try to see where where it is indeed being used 
so here for example w could be written in the form of a or b and c or d so c or d is equal to t1 or here x could be written in the form of not b and c or d or b and not c and not d and for the y and z we don't have it okay so the c or d could be considered as a factor the form it in the as the t1 t1 is equal to c or d and then w x will be updated y and z will remain the same and now the gate cost will be equal to 19 so you can see that now the the cost of the implementation in terms of the gate cost is reduced we can move forward by considering the complement of t1 so t1 bar will be equal to not c and not d and we have it at some places so over here and here we have not t1 and if we replace them in the expressions and count the gate cost again we will have g equal to 16 so it's even smaller than the previous optimization in the step which was 19 so now the gate cost will be equal to 16 and as a result we can indeed use these expressions that we have here and in the next step we can do the technology mapping what we have here in the left hand is the implementation of all those output functions or output variables using the AND gates OR gates and the inverters and we have one OR gate here while here on the right hand side we have the implementation using the NAND gates to input NAND gates to input NOR gates and we also have the 2-2 AOI gates and or invert gates okay so now we have done this mapping how this mapping is done we will indeed go into details in the next part of the lecture we will see how to convert this implementation into the implementation where we use only NAND gates for example or only NOR gates or maybe a combination of the two all right so I think that's all for this part of the lecture in the next part we will go through the start we will start with the hierarchical design in it we will see what the hierarchical design in is and how we can use it and we also will talk about the verification either manually or uh, using a software and we will also discuss more about the technology mapping all right so that's all for this video thank you for watching and see you in the next part of the lecture